Hey, I'm Amy, and we're going to be running through Hogs of War the Miniatures game. So we're going to start with Mission 1. This video will be segmented into different sections, so if you need to skip ahead, that's fine. Please do so. Uh, don't worry, no spoilers. And essentially, the game will end when we get one of our two players to 12 victory points. We've got our board set up. Just have to copy what's going on in the book here. And we've got a primary objective in this campaign where um, players will score three victory points if they get to the capture token and the central victory point, which looks a little bit like this. And he's going to go in the middle there. At the start of the game, you'll be given four secondary objectives. Out of our initial four, we're going to choose one of them. We'll cho choose pick to victory. And you're going to pass those to the player next to you and be passed three more. From your new secondary objectives, you then discard one and keep the rest. And those are gonna be my secondary objectives for the game. Points are scored at the end of every round and we'll keep collating them until someone gets to 12 victory points to win the game. So each turn is made up of five phases. We're gonna talk about the first phase, which is the base phase. First of all, you need to place your base on the main uh, game board, and then we can look at what's inside our base. Every single campaign, you always start with two key buildings. The first one is the headquarters and the second one is your large refinery. The large refinery is going to help you to get swill each turn. This is our currency. You start the game with six so you don't need to worry about starting off with anything. Um, and we're going to gain four swill because that's what the refinery will grant us each turn. Some buildings will give us more and some will give us less and that's going to be tracked by this die. So every single time that we're going to gain or lose some swill at this beginning step of our turn we can just track that on the die. Every single turn you can buy one building and it can be any of your choice and it will unlock certain things but in this mission specifically you can place two additional buildings just for free so you can pick wisely. For example we could choose this tank unlockable building. We can place it anywhere on our grid. Same with your headquarters and refinery. You don't need to put those in any specific place you can choose. So I could just pop this right here and that's going to lower our swill by one. So we're going to put this down to a three and now at the start of my next turn I'm going to gain three swill. But this can go up and down so don't worry too much about using it up. So that's going to unlock our tank. So we can flip over our tank card and those units are ready to be placed. Now we're going to place a second building, we'll just take this one for example, pop that anywhere I fancy, and then that's going to unlock the snipers. Anything with an unlock symbol is going to unlock something, so you need to find the icon that matches that unit. At the beginning of your turn, don't forget to add your income swill, so we're going to need three more, um, adding to our six that we get at the start of the game. So we're going to go seven, eight, nine. And it's time for some additional setup. So for this mission, we get five of our grunts, which we can place immediately around our base, and one additional unit. The unit doesn't need to be unlocked, so I can choose this bombardier, for example, and pop him there. So once both players are set up there, we can start to do things with our units. <laughs> Now we're on phase three, the grunt phase. So this is where our units will get to start doing things, but they're only gonna move in initiative order. So you have a look at the top left-hand side of each of the cards, which your units reside on, and they're gonna move based on the number in the stopwatch. So the orderlies are always gonna move first. If you're, or you or your opponent don't have any, then it obviously moves on to the next unit, and so on and so forth. If there's a tie for who has that unit, like we all start with grunts in this mission, then whoever has this token is going to move first. Each grunt, in this example, uh, has two action points. These are located on the second icon across on the sausages on your card. So we know that we have two actions per grunt and they can do any of the actions on the card. Every other unit has more special actions than their grunts, but first of all, we're gonna be focusing on moving and getting places. So there's lots of different icons on the board where we can gain resources or victory points at this stage. So if I was going to move one of my units towards maybe a refinery or the alpha token in the middle to start gaining victory points. There's all sorts of places that we can start moving towards. We also have terrain to deal with. So if a unit is in terrain, it gets a little bit of cover. 
This will allow our opponents to roll fewer dice when they're attacking. In this example, we're in the forest, which gives our opponents fewer blue dice to roll when they're attacking us because we've got cover from that lovely forest. Now, one thing to note is that our pigs can't swim. So if we are headed towards a lake or a river, they're not going to be able to proceed past them. So they're going to need to find other routes around. The next icon along on our card is our health points. So each of our grunts will have two health before they're wiped out of the, of the battlefield. So moving the game on a little bit, we can talk about capturing. So for an action point with my unit, I could move for one. And for one additional action, I can pop one of my tokens on this strategic point. At the beginning of my next turn, or at the end of this turn, I will gain a victory point for each strategic point that I have a token on. Next, if I would want to move one of my other units, I could go and capture this refinery. And what that's going to do is tick my swill dice up by two. So we're going to go up to five. At the beginning of my turn, I'm going to gain five swill now, and that will remain as long as my token stays on that icon. The only way that your icon can move from a tile is if an opponent comes along and replaces yours with theirs. So this little hog could go here and spend an action to replace our token with their own. And that will immediately tick down our swill dice back to three. Let's talk about construction. So for one action on your turn, one of your units can use one of our deployables. So first of all, we're going to be looking at the side with icons on. One of them is our construction token. So we're going to need three for this one. And we instantly have to pay four swill to be able to place this. So we're going to move from nine down to five on our board. On our turn, we can use an additional action to remove one of the tokens. When all of the tokens have been removed by one of your units, the token will flip over and it's live. Each of the deployables has a different effect and we can learn about those in the rule book. Let's talk attacking. So when my unit would like to attack an enemy unit, we have a look at the bottom row on our unit card. So the blue dice are for guns, the red die are for melee attacks and the green die are for explosives. So this unit that I've got here, my grunt from a distance of two hexes away, I can use two blue die to attack our opponent. However, because my opponent's in the trees, we'll only get one blue die due to them being in cover. So because I'd only have one blue die, maybe I want to move a little bit closer. For one action, I can move closer and then roll the red die to do a melee attack instead. So I got a critical, so that unit's going to be wiped out because a critical counts as two hits. So the various icons on the dice mean different things. This one is a hit. We need two glances to count as a hit. So these alone don't do anything. We have a critical hit, which can injure vehicles like our tanks, or we have blanks, which don't do anything. If we do partial damage to a unit, but it's not defeated, then you can use a token to display that it's taken some damage. So for this interaction, if my tank wants to attack the enemy in the mountains here, we'd have a look at how far away it is. I see on my card that I'm allowed two red and two uh, green die. And, but my opponent's in the mountains, so I will not be allowed to roll one of my green die because he's obscured a bit by those. So I'll roll my die. And nice, we got a critical hit. Oh wow, so that absolutely obliterates that unit. So he wouldn't be around anymore for certain. But if we'd have only done a little bit of damage, then we could have given him a minus one health token like so. So attacking tanks is a little bit different. You're still going to look at how far away you are from your opponent. So in this example, we're still three hexes away. So we get the same die as last time. So I'm going to give those a roll and we'll see what we hit. <laughs> nice. So the only way that you can attack and do damage to a vehicle is using critical hits. We got two critical hits, which is fantastic. So we will now get to roll two vehicle damage dies. These are a little bit different and have different symbols on. Let's give them a roll and see what we can do. Awesome. So we got one hit. This one is just a singular hit. The tank's going to take one damage and we can use a token. This was a flame token. We can add this to the tank. And now, for future turns, whenever we attack this tank, we're going to get an extra vehicle damage die for free. We don't need to roll a critical hit to get that. The other icon that we haven't mentioned looks a little like this. It's a stun and a damage. So we would stun the tank. On the, a player's next turn, they're going to need to use an action to remove the stun before that tank can do anything. 
So that would need to be removed for an action later, but it, they'll also get a damage for that as well. So that's another possibility. A tank's health is a little bit like its action points. So basically, this tank has four action points, and whenever it's damaged, it's gonna lower the amount of actions that it can do. So we're gonna inhibit our opponent's tanks until they're removed from the board. Once it's taken four damage, because it has four action points, then it will be removed from play. Phase four is recruitment. This is where I get to spend the rest of my swill. So I've got five left, so I could hire a sniper and a grunt. So if I'm gonna recruit them, then I just plot them adjacent to my area there. Spend all that swill, so I've got none left. They must go adjacent to your base tile, and if there's no space left, then you can't recruit another unit until one has moved out of its way. During this phase, you can also use your unit upgrades. So if I wanted one of those, then I can spend the cost of swell and pop that under my unit to give it extra abilities. Let's talk the aerial phase, technically phase two, but only if you have any aerial units. So, planes work in a slightly different way to our regular units. They have speed and their initiative is based off that speed. So, on my turn, I can move my speed marker up or down only one space and right below that is its new initiative. The speed will allow me to do various things which are on the chart on the board that you'll hide from your opponent. If you are dueling aerial units, then you'll hide what you're doing until you're ready to reveal at the same time. So it'll just show me what I'm allowed to do. So it'll give me any rotations that I'm allowed, uh, bombing allowed and things like that. If you have a bomb, if you've purchased one, you can use that whenever you like on your turn. And that's the same with shooting. So you can use those whenever you fancy. The only exception to this is the very first thing that an aerial unit must do is move forward one space in the direction it's currently facing. If it hits a mountain, it automatically is removed from play. It cannot survive that. The area below the initiative tells me where my plane, plane is allowed to go and kind of if it's allowed to rotate. So at the moment, I've got it on the left-hand turn. So at one point during my turn, I must rotate it left. So for example, I could move it, have to move it forward one space first, and then I could do my one rotation and that could go to the left like so. When a plane takes damage, it must be crit in order to take damage. It will start to get worse and lose functionality. To represent this, we use one of these cubes and we will be putting them over our movement area. Uh, now, when a plane is crit, we're using our vehicle damage dice, uh, each of the symbols will mean slightly different things. If it's this regular symbol with two little pips on, then I will get to decide where that token goes. And if it's this singular one, then my opponent gets to choose where it goes. Phase five, the end phase. So now we're gonna see who's got some victory points to gain. So the first thing we do is check the primary objective. So in this instance, it was to capture the central victory point hex. One of our teams has done that. They're instantly going to get three victory points. So let's move them up on the victory point tracker. If this were to take them to 12, they'd win instantly. So we wouldn't check the rest of the victory points for the round. Then we check the strategic markers. Oh, look, yep, one for each team as well. And that's what you'll do at the end of every round. And then the coin will move over to the other player, solving any ties in initiative or ties throughout the game. Thanks for watching. For any other information on solo play, sandbox, or three to four play, you can check the rule book. Thank you so much and enjoy playing.